One thing you need to know about music is that music is a spiritual thing. Music is something that transcends this world. Music is something that transcends the barrier of language. Music has the power to touch the very bottom of your soul. Music has the power to move your spirit. Music has the power to pull people together and even tear them apart. There is a power in music which we cannot see with our natural mind, but we can sure feel that power with our soul and spirit. It acts as a bridge to the infinite and can touch areas of your very heart and soul. You know I am telling the truth. Music has the power to change your mood. One song can change your mood from being cheerful to being sorrowful. One song can remind you of your childhood. It's a time machine transporting us back to moments etched in the halls of memory. One song can bring memories back of the saddest and lowest points of your life. One song can evoke emotions that you did not even know you had inside you. You know I am telling the truth. Don't take music lightly. I warn the members of my congregation not to listen to secular music. But there is always one person who says, but it's only music or it's just songs. Yet we live in a generation that grossly, grossly underestimates music. A generation that grossly underestimate the power of music and the profound effect it has on an individual. I remember a story of a young man who used to be a gangster and in his testimony, he spoke of the power of music. Any time before he would go commit a robbery or a drive-by, he would be absolutely terrified to the point where he would not want to commit the crime. He would be scared to get caught. He would be scared to hurt someone. But as soon as he put his headphones on and he started playing heavy rock music, he wouldn't care anymore. He didn't care about getting caught or hurting someone. It was as if a demonic courage came upon him. The story of the young gangster is not an isolated incident. It's a stark illustration of the profound impact music can have on our psyche and behavior. This is not to demonize any particular genre of music. Rather, it is to acknowledge that music carries with it a certain power, an energy that can influence the very core of our being. It's like a key that can unlock different parts of our soul, parts that we may not even know exist. Now, I am sure you have all experienced something not identical to this, but similar to this. There are certain songs I used to listen to when I was in the gym lifting weights. And I don't know what it was about those songs, but when I heard these songs, I could go just a little harder or lift weights just a little bit heavier. I am sure you have experienced the power of music to some extent or in one area or another in your life. Think about the music that surrounds us daily, the songs played in shops, in our cars, over the radio, each melody each rhythm and each lyric subtly weaving into our subconscious, affecting our mood, our thoughts, and even our actions. Music is not just a background soundtrack to our lives. It is an active participant shaping and defining our experiences. Music has power. Now think what happens to you as an individual when you listen to songs that are busy talking about sex, lust, fornication, and adultery. Do you think songs like that are pulling you closer to the Lord or pulling you closer to the lusts of the flesh? You may wonder why you are struggling with a particular sin, but you spend all day and night listening to songs that encourage that very sin. You find people who carelessly listen to songs they couldn't care less what the lyrics were whatsoever. They know every word of the song, but they have never stopped to think about what exactly the lyrics of that song are attempting to convey. I am sorry to say this, but there are mainstream songs out there that actively worship the devil in their lyrics and churchgoers actually sing these secular songs because they are catchy and they have a nice beat to it. If the presence of God can come where the Lord is being worshipped and exalted, what spirits do you think come when the devil is being exalted? There are even articles that I have read where people who left the occult have stated some of the music videos that we see on TV are representations of occult ceremonies. And in all honesty, that does not surprise me. 
Does that surprise you? I am here to just encourage, to be selective about what you listen to. Be selective about what you play in your home. You need to understand that the devil will do all he can to enter into the life of a person. And what I see creeping more and more into the church is quote-unquote Christian artists that look no different from secular music. We, as the body of Christ, have been called out of the world and not to be like the world. Just because a song says God three times in that song, it does not mean that that song is a Christian song or that it is a Christian artist. You need to be discerning with what music you listen to, even if it is labeled as Christian music. Is that music exalting a man or is it exalting Jesus? There is a drastic change in modern day church worship songs. Be careful when you listen to them. In this era, where music plays a pivotal role in shaping our spiritual lives, a discerning ear is more crucial than ever, especially when it comes to modern worship songs. The essence of true worship music should be to glorify God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. However, a concerning trend has emerged in recent times the rise of man-centered worship songs. These songs, often cloaked in the guise of spirituality, subtly shift the focus from the divine to the human, from the creator to the creation. The danger of such songs is that they often mask their human-centric messages in catchy tunes and emotive lyrics. They speak more about our feelings, our desires, our struggles, and less about the nature of God, His sovereignty, His grace, and His plan of salvation. The danger here is not just in the content, but in the subtle shift of our worship's direction. Worship, in its truest form, is not about us, but about God, just like salvation, which is not about us, but about God and what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. It's a time to acknowledge His Lordship, to confess our dependence on Him, and to celebrate His greatness. When worship songs become centered on human experiences and emotions, they risk turning worship into a self-focused activity rather than a God-focused one and this represents a dark shift in some modern-day worship songs. They are not focusing on God. Consider the profound difference between a song that exalts the human spirit and one that exalts the Holy Spirit. The former may stir emotions and create a sense of euphoria, but does it lead to a deeper understanding of God? Does it inspire awe and reverence for His holiness? Does it challenge us to live more Christ-like lives? The true power of worship music lies not in its ability to entertain or to evoke emotions, but in its capacity to draw us closer to God Almighty, to transform us more into the likeness of Christ. A song can sound fantastic, but that does not make it a worship song. This shift towards man-centered worship music is not just a matter of lyrical content. It reflects a deeper theological shift that must be addressed. It points to a growing focus on self-fulfillment and emotional satisfaction in worship, rather than on God's revelation and our response to it in faith and obedience. Worship music should not be about what makes us feel good or what meets our personal preferences, but about what honors and glorifies God. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to be vigilant about the music you allow into your worship and into your hearts. Examine the lyrics, consider their focus, and ask yourself, is this song leading me to a deeper love for God, or is it merely appealing to my emotions? Is it grounded in Scripture, and does it accurately reflect the character of God, or is it not different from secular music? Does it uplift Christ as the central figure of our faith? You need to understand the times you are living in, a time where the lines between right and wrong are blurred. You are living in times where the lines between sacred and secular are increasingly blurred. Our call to discernment is more important than ever. In the same vein, there is a growing concern in the realm of worship music that needs to be addressed with the same level of discernment and vigilance, the endorsement of moral relativism in some modern worship songs. 
This trend is alarming as it stands in stark contrast to the absolute moral truths upheld in biblical Christianity. It's essential to understand that worship is not just about music, it's a reflection of our theology and our relationship with God. Worship songs that implicitly or explicitly endorse a relativistic approach to morality subtly erode the foundational truths of the Christian faith. These songs, often wrapped in appealing melodies and emotional lyrics, may seem harmless. However, they can insidiously promote a worldview where moral biblical absolutes are replaced by subjective interpretations. This is dangerous because it leads believers away from the unchanging truths of Scripture and towards a more human-centered, feel-good theology. Moreover, the lifestyle and beliefs of some worship artists themselves can sometimes directly oppose the teachings of the Bible. Their personal stances on issues of sin and morality often seep into their music, creating a blurred line between biblical truth and personal opinion. When the messenger's life is at odds with the message of the gospel, it raises a red flag about the spiritual integrity and the theological soundness of their songs. This problem is compounded when these songs, with their blurred messages about sin and morality, are brought into our churches and our homes. They not only influence individual believers, but also shape the collective theology of the congregation. When worship songs fail to clearly uphold biblical morality, they do not just fail as music, they fail in guiding believers in their spiritual journey. As followers of Christ, we must be vigilant and discerning about the worship music we engage with. It's not enough for a song to simply sound good or feel emotionally uplifting. We must delve deeper and ask, do the lyrics of this song align with the teachings of the Bible? Do they uphold the sanctity of God's moral absolutes? Are they leading us closer to God or subtly pulling us away under the guise of spirituality? This discernment is crucial in a time where the lines between right and wrong, sacred and secular, are increasingly blurred. We are called to be in the world but not of it. And this includes our choices in worship music. Let us be mindful that every song we sing in worship is not just a melody, but a proclamation of our beliefs and values. We must ensure that these songs glorify God, not just in their sound, but in their substance, aligning with the truth of the gospel and the moral absolutes it upholds. There is a great supernatural power behind music. Whether you believe it or not, every form of music you hear has a spiritual influence. Music stem from the realm of the spirit, and that is why it has such a great influence on the heart of human beings. Come, don't be ignorant to this. Just look at how one song can make you feel. Music is not only relevant on earth, it began from heaven, and it remains the only ministry that predates time and will continue to be relevant after time. At one point, preaching will cease, Bible study will end, even faith won't last forever. When we are in heaven, we won't need faith in God, because we will be able to see Him as clear as day. But music, my friend, music is an eternal ministry. As you are listening to me right now, angels are exalting and praising and worshipping God. Isaiah 6, 3, And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of His glory. Revelation 4, 8 and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Music is a powerful thing. In conclusion, as we navigate through the vast array of worship music available today, let's be intentional in choosing songs that truly honor God. Songs that not only exalt Him with our lips, but also align with His unchanging truths in their lyrics. Let our worship be a reflection of our unwavering commitment to the absolute moral truths of Scripture. 
standing firm against the tide of moral relativism, 